Well, hello there. It's great to have your company. I'm Renee Brack and this is Movie Juice. And first up in the headlines, the starlet who's infecting thousands with viruses. <laughs> Jessica Biel is the most dangerous celebrity in cyberspace, according to the internet security company McAfee. Cyber criminals use her name more than that of any other star to lure fans to websites that are loaded with spyware, adware and computer viruses. Those entering Bill's name in search engines have a one in five chance of landing on such a site. Oscar winner Billy Bob Thornton will be going toe to toe in a boxing movie. The actor has agreed to put up his dukes in the drama Pound for Pound, which kicks into production next year. Thornton will play a retired boxer who's stuck in a bout of depression after the death of his grandson. The grizzled boxer's life changes, however, when he crosses paths with an up-and-coming teenage fighter. The Hangover star Zach Galifianakis could be joining Steve Carell and Paul Rudd for dinner. The funny man is in talks to star in the comedy Dinner for Schmucks, slated to hit cinemas next winter. The film tells the tale of a weekly dinner that goes pear-shaped when a miserable guest crashes the party. Paul Hogan is back in Australia and he's made a road com. That's a road comedy. And it co-stars the funny dunny dude Kenny, a.k.a Shane Jacobson. They play father and son and after a death in the family, they embark on a long trip filled with the kinds of experiences that make the memories of a lifetime. It was great interviewing Hogs again after his monster global success with Crocodile Dundee and he doesn't look a day over how old he really is. Take a look. Come on, Dad. Where are we going? We're going fishing. Since when have you liked fishing? We're going anywhere. There you are. Do you remember when I was little, you always promised me that one day we'd go and cast a line off the northernmost tip of Australia? No, we're uh, doing it now. You lost your mind. Cape York's like 3,000 miles from here. <laughs> yep. What did make you laugh uh, while you are on the road shooting this film? No, him. The, <laughs> no, him. The, the refusal to take anything seriously, except when he said action, and then we had to drop all our nonsense that we're into and, you know, play the characters. Not cut? Mm, yeah, they eventually they'll cut. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they are so swept up in our artistic performance that they just let it roll. Yeah, because okay. of the craft. The craft. And the brave decisions we were making. In brave our decisions, polishing our craft and stretching to the, the edge of the envelope. <laughs> the actor talk stuff, I learned all this in Hollywood and <laughs> teaching show. This is the lot. The open road, the dead. Is it getting any better than this? <laughs> This little river. It's a big koala. You're gonna be like this all the way. It's Australia, Dad. It's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Everything all right, isn't it? I can handle this. Tell her to get some glasses. What would be the one place that you saw in that 3,000 mile journey that you would definitely go back to again and spend some time? Oh, that's a different way of asking the question. Yeah. We always say the Hay Plains, we, we love the Hay Plains, but you wouldn't go back and stay in the Hay Plains. <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, places like Kuna Barabran and Gunnidar. And I think Kuna Barabran had a fantastic Chinese restaurant. It's all about food with me, but that's my yeah. story. That's how Tenderfield had charm. Yeah. Emerald. Emerald hot. In quite hot. Satan wouldn't live there. Yeah, but... Great place, but hot. But Satan did live there, and that made it sort of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. The Great Barrier Reef. One of the true wonders of the world. Steven Soderbergh has made some great movies with some of the best actors alive today. There's the Ocean's Eleven franchise, Traffic, Erin Brockovich, and a soon-to-be-released four-hour epic about the legendary freedom fighter Che Guevara. And he's got another one out this week called The Girlfriend Experience. It's a real inside look into the life and times of a $2,000-an-hour call girl who does kiss on the first date, among other things. Because what the client wants is a girlfriend experience. Sasha Gray plays the lead role, and in real life, she's the most successful porn star so far this century, with more than 160 films to her credit. I learned a lot when we had a chat recently. Sometimes clients think they want the real you, but at the end of the day, they don't. They want what they want you to be. They want you to be something else. Well, they don't I'm, want you to be yourself. I'm a rare client that really wants to if they wanted you to be yourself, they wouldn't be paying you. What do you think it is that um, Soderbergh saw in you that made you perfect to play Chelsea? I was on a panel with him about a month ago and he said that he saw a very driven person um, and especially because I'm so young and 18 at the time, um, he thought that would fit perfectly into this character. Is this just a 
a drama or is it really based on some fact? It's really based on some fact. Uh, Steven and the casting director, Carmen Cuba, actually interviewed a handful of escorts. They saw that these men wanted more than just the sex and they wanted a companion that can kind of just cater to what they want. So it's not necessarily about having the woman of your dreams, it's about having the woman of your dreams who kind of agrees with everything you say, you know? Uh, we found that a lot where it was, you dealt with um, these women who, they were always on. You know, they were, they, were, they were acting in a sense because sometimes these weren't their real personalities when they would go meet a client. You know, went back to the hotel, but he's very well endowed and sometimes I just can't handle him that long. Lucky for me though, he's attractive, so that helps and I at least enjoy myself. Up is a very upbeat animation from the people who made Toy Story and a personal favourite of mine, Finding Nemo. That juggernaut studio is Disney Pixar. Folks all over the world are raving about this new movie, about a cranky old bloke who ties thousands of balloons to his house so he can fulfil a lifelong dream of seeing the wilds of South America. Problem is, he's accidentally picked up a stowaway. is Pixar's 10th film. It is a big adventure. And so it's so exciting to have Up be the first Pixar film in 3D. <gasps> Up is an action adventure with great entertaining characters taking you to a world you've never seen before. <laughs> there is a contrast between Russell Can we stop? and Carl. Shoot! <laughs> Beat it. And as an animator, the voice performances are always a very solid blueprint. I came all this way just to get stuck on the wrong end of this mountain. Carl Fredrickson is played by Ed Asner, who is a perfect grouchy curmudgeon but still very lovable character. He uh, just wants to be left alone and grousing to himself about the things that afflict him in society. Hey, that's why they cast me. An explorer is a friend to all. Russell is voiced by a child who is not an actor, and we just found. Wow, that was cool. Pete and Bob wanted a just really natural, innocent voice of someone that really is only eight years old, and we ended up loving Jordan. We used to sit in the back laughing because it was exactly that kind of chatter from the back seat you'd want to annoy Carl. With my wilderness explorer GPS, we'll never be lost. Oops. If you'd like to fulfill your lifelong dream of scoring a free double pass to see Up, we have 20 to give away. Jump online at moviejuice.tv, hit the win button, fill in a couple of details and answer this question in 25 words or less if you like. If you could float over any part of the world, where would you go and why? Golly gosh, that's it. Over so soon. I'd like to say, wait, there's more, but there isn't. Oh, yeah, there is. Online at moviejuice.tv. You can get more there. In the meantime, I'll see what other good stuff I can find for you. See you next time.